Welcome everyone to the Minnesota Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. We are so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today to speak with you. My name is Daisha and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items to share with you. First, your camera and your microphone are off. So the panelists in tonight's session will not be able to see or hear you. However, you can communicate with them by using the Q&A button on your screen to type any questions you have for our presenters at any time and they'll be able to respond to you. This is one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to check out the schedule on the website. And the presentation for tonight's session is being recorded and it will be available to you at strivescan.com slash Minnesota. I'd now like to turn it over to our first presenter, University of Oregon. Thank you so much. Um, my name is Ryan Bottomore. My pronouns are he, him, his, and I'm super excited to be joining you all today. Um, I am representing the University of Oregon. I am a proud alum of the institution. I graduated about two years ago with two degrees, one in business administration and the other one in art and technology. So I have both the perspective of a former student as well as a faculty member, as well as a staff member. So I'm super excited for you to be joining and hopefully I'll be able to provide you all the information that you may be seeking about the institution. So I'm going to start sharing my screen. And if I can get some sort of verbal confirmation that you all are able to see this screen, that would be fantastic. You're good to go. Perfect. Thank you. So to kick things off, I do want to show you where we are located in the state of Oregon. So kind of a geography lesson of today. So we are located in Eugene, which is the quintessential college town. So the central western half of the state of Oregon. We are about an hour drive away from the Oregon coast, as well as about an hour drive away from the Cascade Mountains. So if you are interested in surfing, snowboarding, skiing, exploring Oregon in the sense of going to a waterfall, exploring a lake, going down a river, kayaking, paddle boarding, whatever it may be, we're centrally located in a variety of different opportunities right there in the state of Oregon. So why the University of Oregon? We are a middle to large size institution where we have around 18,000 undergraduate students, where we have 50 states represented on our campus and around 90 different countries. If you add graduate students, we are about 22,000 students and over 101 different countries are represented on our campus. So when you are sitting in your classrooms, when you are participating in any clubs and organizations, you'll be meeting students all across the world. And I think that really fosters a collaborative and a unique learning environment on our campus. So we are a middle to large size institution, but we do have the class sizes to being a small institution. Our average class size is 36 and our median class size is 19 and our student to faculty ratio is 17 to one. That is a little bit misleading, and I do want to let you know that we do have a few lecture courses that can range from 100 to about 520, but those are split up into labs and discussions of about 19 to 20 students, so you'll still get that smaller class feel. But like I said, our average class size is going to be around 36, and our median class size is 20. We are a research-based institution, so we are part of the Association of American Universities, or the AAU, and it's not the basketball AAU if you're familiar with that, but this is where we do undergraduate and interdisciplinary research all across campus, and actually about 75% of our students on campus, so three quarters of our population are actively in research in, uh, in some sort of capacity, shape, or form, whether that's working independently, whether that's working with a faculty or staff member, or maybe that's even just being a test subject. When I was a student, I took psychology courses and a part of my curriculum is just to be a participant in some of the test studies that my classmates or upper classmates are, uh, are involved in. We do have the Clark Honors College as well as about 47 majors with departmental honors. So if you are looking for a more rigorous ac uh, academic program on our campus, we do, like I said, have the honors program as well as departmental honors. And I'll talk a little bit about our, our academic programs a little bit later. And then the last thing I want to mention is our study abroad programs. We have 300 programs in over 80 different countries and about a quarter of our students actually study abroad. You, we don't have any restrictions and you can study abroad at any point during your college experience. Um, but I do want to say that we have a few pre-freshman programs in London and in Singapore. 
here are some top majors that we have on our campus. Advertising, architecture, biology, business, computer and information science, economics, general social science, human physiology. As you can see, the list kind of goes on and on, but these are some of our top majors. We have 168 to choose from. Although you may not see the one that you are listed here, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be more than happy to share any information about a prospective major that you may have on campus. Like I said, I did business administration and art and technology. So if you have any specific questions in regards to those, more than happy to share my experience. We have 300 clubs and organizations that students can be a part of, and there are a few different subsections of clubs and organizations that I'd like to address. We have general clubs and organizations, like uh, we have our student government, we have fraternity and sorority life, or maybe even that outdoor program. We have academic based organizations. Maybe you want to work in duck TV, in TV broadcasting, making your own podcasts, writing for our on campus newspapers, the ethos flux, the emerald, or maybe you want to be a part of our affinity or identity based organizations, whether that's the Native American student union, the black student union, the Latinx organizations, the Asian Pacific Islander organizations, the LGBTQIA, the men's center, the women's center, the veterans center. As you can see, the list goes on and on and there's about 300 clubs and organizations that students can partake in. And if you can't find the one that you want, go to the Center for Student Involvement and you can start your own club. But the best way to start off your student experience is by living on campus. It is a live on requirement for all first year students, but I'd highly recommend doing your research at housing.uoregon.edu to learn more. Now talking about the application process, I am your admissions counselor, so I'll be the one reviewing your application, and this is what I consider. We are a holistic review process, meaning that I look at your academic performance from your GPA, your grade trend, your academic courses, which courses you're taking, maybe that's AP, IB, honors, dual enrollment courses, and in addition, your senior schedule. And I know senioritis is a thing, don't let that affect you because we do look at your senior schedule. We look at what are you doing outside the classroom, activities, work, volunteering, Hearing. I want to know what's taking up your time outside the classroom. And then I do want to say that we are a test optional institution where if you choose to submit it, we will take that into consideration, but it is not a requirement and students will automatically be considered test optional. So you have to opt in by submitting your scores. And then a 650 word personal statement. This is my favorite. Let us know more about who you are as an individual and let your central yourself be the central subject of that personal statement. And here are a few deadlines. So for those who are seniors in the audience right now, November 1st is coming up and that is our early action deadline. Just make sure you apply by January 15th, which is our regular deadline, and you'll hear a decision no later than April 1st. But those are some of the decision, uh, deadlines coming up. And I do want to say that the Oregon Guarantee is something that we have initiated where we provide each UO student a fixed tuition rate for up to five years. Here is my contact information, so please feel free to reach out to me at any point. And then the QR code is the registration for um, this event, and you can stay in contact with me in that way. And thank you so much, and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you, University of Oregon, for kicking us off. Our next institution is South Dakota State University. Be with you shortly, just putting my screens up. Sorry, everybody, just having a little bit of difficulty getting those up here tonight. Okay, thanks everybody for joining me. My name is Ryan Vandekeeft with South Dakota State University and uh, here to share a little bit about our university tonight. I'm a little bit partial, uh, having grown up in Minnesota myself. So looking forward to spending uh, a little bit of time with everybody tonight. Um, on the screen, you'll see some of our general infographics that just, I think, will give somebody a brief introduction to the university. Uh, we're located very close. We're only miles from the border, so it's a pretty close drive for most of you here with us tonight. Uh, we are the largest university in South Dakota with a little over 11,000 students. Uh, we're a public land grant university, which really means uh, we're a comprehensive university really here to promote accessible education for students. Uh, what that means is there's a lot here for you, but also you're going to have a lot of opportunities in the classroom. 
um, across academic activities, across student organizations, and among the other areas. Uh, we have students here from 49 of the 50 states. We, we didn't quite get Vermont last year, so uh, we're hoping that uh, they'll be joining us here soon, uh, but also 74 different countries. So a great opportunity to uh, see some familiar faces uh, from close to home, as well as quite a ways away. Uh, Minnesota is our second highest state of enrollment, so quite possibly you'll, you'll run into some, some close friends and make a lot of new ones along the way. Uh, those connections are really important. You see that uh, represented in that average class size of about 25 to 30. Uh, you see that in that faculty or student to faculty ratio being small as well. And what that really means is when it comes time to uh, be uh, referred uh, for uh, an internship or a job opportunity, uh, a professor is going to know you and be able to make that referral pretty easily. Uh, we also utilize an advising model which uh, connects you with an advisor uh, right away when that's their primary role on campus to make sure that you get off to a good start in your academic plan. Um, noteworthy being the safest college campus in South Dakota, three years running now, uh, that's also reflected in some national recognitions that we've received, but I think also always great to know that you're going to come to a university where uh, that doesn't have to be a concern of yours. Uh, a few fun facts, uh, right in the middle there, you maybe see 60 flavors of ice cream. Uh, we, uh, SDSU invented cookies and cream uh, here on our campus, so uh, you can thank SDSU if you've ever had a scoop, and it's something that you always have to try when you're here. Uh, but last, I would just call attention to uh, a couple of the rankings, top 5% nationally for best value and the best total package in South Dakota. I think that just really represents that uh, total uh, the, the total experience that you're going to be able to have at South Dakota State in the classroom, conducting research activities um, outside the classroom in the residence halls in a modern campus and in a community that's just very welcoming uh, to students. In terms of academics, we've got a little over 200 different options when you consider our majors, our minors and specializations. That's programs within this area of agriculture, food, and environmental science. So uh, we have a new uh, partnership with the University of Minnesota uh, for students to do their veterinary medicine program at SDSU and finish that up up at the U of M, uh, but also uh, quality programs in precision agriculture, animal science, as well as others. You see a lot of programs in this area of arts, communities, and social sciences. Those are students studying in our School of Design, our Nest School of Management and Economics, College of Journalism, and some other areas. Um, I like a lot of these slides because they're also very visual as you get a chance to kind of see a life on campus and in the classroom. Um, in education and human sciences, we have students um, studying to be future educators at all levels, as well as those that are going into different service industries like aviation and hospitality and nonprofit work, nutrition. So that's encompassed in a lot of areas here. Within the College of Engineering, uh, you're seeing students that are studying engineering degrees, but also technology degrees, math, computer science, and a few others. Natural Sciences includes students that are aspiring to be future physicians, dentists, optometrists, or those that are studying atmospheric sciences and physics. You know, they're all included in this area. Our College of Nursing is one of the most longstanding programs in our state. Um, and by comparison, a lot of our students are leaving with a lot more simulation and clinical hours compared to their counterparts. And then with pharmacy and allied health, a lot of great programs here uh, directly related to our pandemic right now with respiratory care, uh, medical lab science, and pharmacy. And the pharmacy is a top three program nationally in terms of pass rates on the national exam. So a couple of things to maybe wrap up uh, with uh, just logistics. Uh, we're on rolling admission. There's no deadline. So you'll have um, all throughout your senior year, we're still recommending that early fall timeline. Um, we would collect application fees and transcripts. Um, just wanted to mention we are a test optional institution, so uh, that test score could be provided if you choose. We're just looking for you to meet one of those minimum requirements in the middle, um, as well as be on track to complete those coursework in the right hand column. Okay. Note that we are accepting super score for ACT as well. Uh, we'd have an admissions decision back to you pretty quickly, you know, probably a couple of weeks or left, less after the time of application. Wanted to point out Minnesota reciprocity is available to you. Uh, they're in that middle column, so you can see very close to what our resident students are paying. And if you're a student that's taking a lot of PSEO courses, you know, there's a great chance for you to reduce that cost if you're transferring a lot of those in, which we do see transfer very well. Then last, I'd just promote uh, guaranteed scholarship opportunities for you through the Jackrabbit Guarantee. Um, whether that's uh, here, you see test optional policy as well. So if it's just a GPA, you'd look to that FAR column on a minimum guaranteed scholarship, 
or um, if you have taken a test exam score, uh, we're looking at that intersection and that combination for you. So again, annual amounts, four-year renewable for you, and then there's also some competitively award scholarships as well. So again, uh, sorry for a few technology uh, issues right away to get started, but appreciate the time they had tonight. Uh, we are offering in-person visit programs as well as some virtual experiences uh, Monday through Friday, as well as some weekend programs. So thanks for the time today. Look forward to seeing you on campus. Thank you, South Dakota State University. Our next institution is Alaska Pacific University. Okay, can you guys see my screen? Yes. Awesome. All right, well, good evening, everyone. My name is Campbell Cry. I am a regional admission counselor for Alaska Pacific University. I'm actually based out of Minnesota. So um, I moved up to Alaska and worked there and then moved back after a year back to Minnesota. So I'm located in the Twin Cities area and would love to meet up with you if you are um, in the central Minnesota or Wisconsin area. Um, and are interested in APU. Um, so I'm just going to share a little bit about our the university, the um, statistics of the university, the admissions process, and um, everything in between. So the mission statement, uh, we uh, provide a world-class hands-on education. Um, we want to focus pretty much on um, getting you out into the field and getting hands-on experience. Um, we want to collaborate with the community, with our tribal partners, um, the native partners within the state. Uh, and a part of our vision statement along with that is we want to um, honor the indigenous heritage, um, exemplify excellence and prepare paths for you going forward. A little bit of the demographic and some statistics about campus. So we are located in Anchorage, Alaska. If you are not familiar with Alaska or haven't been before, Anchorage is the largest city. It's about 300,000 people. However, APU itself is a very small um, private liberal arts and science university of 500 students. 85% um, of our students are coming from within the state of Alaska. However, we are still representing 31 other states and countries. Um, just to give you um, some perspective on that, our student body president currently, that has been our student body president for the last three and a half years, uh, she is from Minnesota. And we have several other students from Minnesota. So a lot of students from the metro states. Our ratio is seven to one. So it's a very small tight knit um, community small class sizes the classes are between 18 to 22 students and there are three camp campus housing options we have our traditional dorm style atwood which is where many of our freshman students live we have seagull horse which is an apartment style and then we have um, university village which are kind of duplex style homes so as far as academics, we do like to keep the information relevant to the state of Alaska. So whether that's just getting you out and working with partners in Alaska, getting you out and going, um, if you're outdoor studies and going and working in the ocean, getting to go down to the streams, um, just getting to work with what you have in the state of Alaska. We are about 10 minutes from the ocean um, and mountains all around. So you do get to really immerse yourself in Alaska. We support and respect students as well as focusing on the students and our community. And we are a place-based learning experienced campus. So just getting the experience you need um, and getting you out into your career um, field as soon as we can. So we're split up into three institutions. I won't cover too much of this, but would love to share more with you if you have a certain interest. But our three areas are business and policy, public policy, excuse me, culture and environment, and then health and wellness. And in the next slide, I will talk a little bit more in depth about those. So we do offer one certificate program. Uh, our associate's degree programs are listed there. So we have business, nursing, health occupations, and community health. Nursing is one of our bigger programs. Um, our, and then our bachelor degrees, just to list a few of our uh, larger programs right now, counseling psychology, outdoor studies and marine and environmental sciences are some of the bigger ones right now. And then we do have master master's programs and one doctorate program as well, if you are wanting to go on. 
So we do offer dorm life. I talked a little bit about that. Going alongside of dorm life, you will get a meal plan option. Um, depending on the dorm you live in, it varies a little bit. But to give you an idea of what it's like as a freshman coming in, you will receive free meals and then you'll receive dining funds for the coffee cart. We also partner with Costco so you can uh, order groceries through Costco and have them delivered to campus. So, so some pretty sweet deals. And we do have a lot of on-campus and off-campus events, everything from karaoke, um, doing indoor kayaking in the pool, um, going downtown and shopping downtown, doing a different hike, all sorts of things. We do have an indoor rock wall that's in our uh, workout facility, as well as an indoor saltwater pool. So life in Alaska. Um, Alaska is amazing. If you have not been, for sure, come check out campus or check out our virtual um, tour online. The views are amazing. You'll see mountains all around. We're kind of surrounded. We're in a bowl on campus almost where there's just mountains every direction that you look. A lot of rich his history and culture just with the native culture in Alaska that you'll learn about. Um, as far as national rankings, we do have a Nordic ski team on campus and we have sent uh, about 10 plus skiers to the Winter Olympics, um, including Keegan Randall, if you're familiar with that name. She is from APU and she won the gold medal in 2018. Um, you'll see moose and bears and salmon and eagles, just to give you an idea of wildlife and a lot of annual events um, that I did a rod every year. Um, and Ferrandi, which is uh, another dog sledding event and many other traditional Alaskan events. So the admissions process, what you'll do is you'll apply it as a rolling application. We do have fee waivers available um, if you are unable to pay the $25 fee. We look for a 2.5 or higher when you submit your official transcript, um, but we will work with you if you have anything lower than that. We do not require the ACT or um, SAT, and that was pre-COVID um, as well. And then the, some of our deadlines are listed as well, which you can see. Uh, financial aid, our tuition is about 20,000 per year. However, 93% of our students receive financial aid. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities out there. Some of the merit-based scholarships are anywhere from 1,500 to 7,000. And those are um, offered once you get admitted. Uh, apply for the FAFSA and then there's some of the other scholarships. Just for time-wise, I'm just gonna go forward. So for sure, reach out to us, follow us on Instagram at, at APU Admissions. And we'd love to have you either visit on campus or if you're not able to come to campus, you can check out our virtual tour online. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alaska Pacific. Our next institution is St. Olaf College. Thank you very much. Let me share my screen real quick. Um, give me one second. We're experiencing a few difficulties. <clears throat> Bear with me for one second. Having trouble sharing my screen. I think this is a system preferences issue. Would it be okay if we moved on to the final institution and I go after? Yes, we can do that. Okay. Um, so we'll now move on to Suffolk University, and we will return um, to St. Olive in a minute. Hello, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Jennifer Finnegan. I'm a senior assistant director of admission here at Suffolk University, and I'm I'm very grateful to be uh, having the chance to talk to you all about Suffolk today. So Suffolk University, biggest part of who we are is where we are. We are an urban institution smack dab right in the center of downtown Boston. Um, there is truly no boundary between our campus and the city itself. Uh, we are one in the same, kind of the opposite of a 
Hollywood style traditional college campus. Um, but at the same time, we have a fairly intimate academic environment. We're considered a medium sized institution with over 4,000 undergraduate students and an average class size of about 17 students or so. So that really does offer you the chance to get to know your peers, um, get to know your faculty really well, and really just have a chance to have an education that makes the most sense for you and your learning style, while at the same time having all, all the opportunities that a city like Boston can offer you. We have in total about 70 different majors between our two schools, our College of Arts and Sciences, as well as our School of Business. Some of our more popular majors um, include things like political science, psychology, sociology. We did originally open up as a law school, which is still in operation today, so that tends to attract a lot of those uh, minded students, as well as things like biology, including health careers. And then on the business side of things, marketing, entrepreneurship are huge. We also have a number of accelerated programs, um, a accelerated five or six years bachelor's master's degree in both our arts and science school and our business school, as well as an accelerated six year bachelor's and law degree um, for students that are interested in getting two degrees in a little bit fewer time. Um, one final thing I will also mention is that we are not just a campus in Boston. We have over 50 different study abroad destinations that our students can choose from, but the most popular of our offerings is Suffolk Madrid. So unlike any other campus, if you were to study in Prague or New Zealand um, or South Korea, you would be studying at a foreign institution. If you were to go to Madrid, you could actually study at Suffolk University, taking Suffolk classes with Suffolk professors. And we do allow students the option of starting abroad directly out of high school as first semester freshmen. Most students can complete up to two years maximum studying overseas in Madrid, but if you are pursuing international relations, you can actually graduate from our Spanish campus, which is a pretty unique experience overall. It truly does reflect who our students are. We have a very diverse student population from just about 100 countries and nearly every state in the US. Um, we're about 17% international in total. And about, I believe last I checked, it's 27% domestic students of color out of that 4,300, nearly 4,400 students. Um, so essentially it looks just like a city. You're gonna see a lot of different students who've had a lot of different experiences from you. This is our campus. If you haven't been to downtown Boston, as you can see, if you step out of any one of these buildings, you are smack dab on the sidewalks. There's probably a Dunkin' Donuts next to you, uh, maybe an apartment building, maybe your future employer is literally right across the street. And yet at the same time, it is fairly compact. All of our buildings are no more than about a 10 minute walk from each other. Um, and we live next to some of the most incredible historic landmarks of the city. Um, Literally, Sam Adams is buried right next to our campus. So <laughs> there's a lot of history, of culture, of arts, um, business, entertainment is all literally right here in the city. We also have our residence halls that you see here on the screen as well. Suffolk is a little bit unique. We do not have a residency requirement for our students, although 85% of our freshmen will stay on campus. The bulk of them do move off campus by junior and senior year. So we absolutely help our students secure apartments um, anywhere throughout the Boston area. It really is a part of the Suffolk culture to kind of get that learning um, how to live on your own before you have to figure out a career out of the way as part of your undergraduate. Um, as I mentioned, this is a truly um, a bit of a unique situation in that we really embrace experiential learning here. Just about every kind of industry that our students are going to go on to be employed in is a neighbor or just a short subway ride away or the T if you're familiar with Boston lingo. So that these, um, you know, industry leaders, government officials are really just as much a teacher as any professor that you might have. Our big name organizations like Mass General Hospital, um, the Boston Red Sox organization, JP Morgan Chase are regularly classroom collaborators coming onto campus or onto Zoom um, to engage with our students and work with them on real world projects, not just hypotheticals, allowing our students to have real access to case data and situations to help them prepare for the kinds of things that they're going to be doing in their future careers. 
Of course, academics are not the only aspect of the college experience. Student life at Suffolk is robust with over 100 different clubs and organizations, about 20 different performing arts organizations, 12 or so cultural affinity groups um, that re reflect our student body, as I mentioned, our Division Three sports teams, 19 in total, and more starting every year. The um, Suffolk student body is ever-changing, ever-evolving, and is always something that our students are contributing to and adding to as uh, the case may be. I'm gonna go a little bit into the application requirements here. So we are a common application school, but we do also have our own application as well. So feel free to use whichever application makes the most sense for you. We offer, like some of my colleagues, a holistic application review. We wanna know everything about who you are as much as we can know about who you are um, and how that informs our looking of your transcript. Many students maybe have a rough freshman year or maybe the last year and a half was difficult for you. And these are all factors that we consider in the application process itself. Our average GPA is about a 3.3 on a 4.0 weighted scale, but that is an average, it is not a minimum. We have a wide range of academic abilities on our campus, everyone from our honors program students, who are the top percentage of the university, to our Suffolk Advantage students, students who are maybe below our average GPA, but are working with our academic coaches for success as they start their college careers. All of these are programs that you are automatically considered for at the point of admission and may be invited to join as a condition of your admission. Now, when we are looking at other application factors, we are test optional. We do not require testing to be considered for any particular majors or any particular honors program or anything along those lines. If you have had the ability to take standardized testing, go ahead and send it in. But if you haven't, have the confidence to go test optional. Do whatever makes the most sense to give yourself the best uh, opportunity for success. We are the office of admission, not the office of rejection. So we're looking to help you get into the best possible position to succeed. Um, now, one other thing I will also mention, and addition to the other requirements that you see. We offer early action, not early decision, as well as regular decision. So our students can always apply early. It is non-binding. That deadline is always gonna be on November 15th. You find out about a month later. And then our regular decision deadline is rolling. So that's definitely something um, for you to think about what makes the most sense for you. If you want your senior year grades to be included in the decision process, if you plan on taking standardized testing, again, um, whatever the case may be, again, do whatever makes the most sense to put yourself in an advantageous position um, for your college application. All right, and then that brings me to the end today. I want to definitely encourage you to check out our website. I'm going to put some information in the chat for you. We have a ton of virtual visit options that you can take a look at if you haven't seen the Boston area and you would love to check us out. Or if you're flying out to Boston, we'd love to get to see you. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thank you, Suffolk University. We will now hear from St. Olaf College. All right, test number two on this. Um, let's see, this should work. Okay, uh, having trouble finding the, they, they're all giving me error messages, so all of my windows. Um, as such, I am prepared to pivot and um, may have to just uh, speak to you right here from, uh, unfortunately we won't be able to show any images of the college, which is a shame because we do have a beautiful campus. Um, it's great as I look out my window right now, but um, if you do want to look uh, up images of St. Olaf, um, we also very much uh, would encourage you to visit. Go to go.stolof.edu slash visit to do that. Um, but I'll just talk for a little bit about the college. So. We are a community of about 3,000 students, which is pretty large for a liberal arts school, but it's generally pretty small for a college. 
Um, and what that means uh, overall is that if you know someone, you meet someone new, you're going to see their face everywhere around campus. Um, if you typically think of what a college town would look like, you would either picture sort of a whole little Hogwarts style world um, around you with a whole complex of buildings, or you might picture a cute little downtown area with maybe a small college uh, right across the way from it. Northfield, Minnesota is actually both of those. Um, St. Olaf has its whole little world on a hill, um, but we're also right across town from the nice downtown area of Northfield and Carleton College, which is another small liberal arts school that's across town from us. Um, so of those 3,000 students, about 10% of our students are international students, um, hailing from 95 plus countries. We also have 23% of our campus is uh, made up of multicultural identities. That number is growing um, as we sort of shift from more of a regional institution to a national institution, but we have greater strides to make in diversity numbers um, and in terms of community building. We have, in, we have initiated a lot of initiatives to help those students uh, not only come in with a diverse class, but feel really welcomed on campus. First and foremost, St. Olaf is a liberal arts school. So um, what that means typically is that there is a breadth, there's a wide variety of academic disciplines that students can take part in. Um, but at the same time, you have the chance to sort of dive deep within a certain area that you want to major in while getting to explore other disciplines. Um, different ways that that can take place. Um, number one, we don't require students to declare a major until their sophomore year on campus. So that allows students to have a little bit more uh, room to explore. We also offer, uh, like a lot of other liberal arts schools, we like to pretend that we're special and we have a special term. Um, so what that what I mean by term is that most students take four classes in the fall semester and four classes in the spring semester. Then for four weeks in January, you'll take just one class for that entire month. Um, and uh, some things that you can do, you can take a class in an area you really want to explore deeply and really want to major in, for example. Um, you could take a class in something completely outside of your major. I, I completed a music major here and graduated in, the, in May of 2021. But the class I took here, my freshman year January term, was a social work class that I actually found was um, probably the most uh, engaging class I took at St. Olaf. Um, it was called Global Challenges, and it, um, really the whole class sort of revolved around what the world is going to look like in 2030 and how, how we get there as a, as a global community. Um, so that's an example of something that you could take over an interim. It's also a very popular time for study abroad. St. Olaf is actually number one in terms of the colleges, in terms of the percentage of students that study abroad in that we have 75 to 80 of our students, percentage of our students studying abroad at some point in those four years. Uh, why that is, is because we are like very many other schools, we are very well globally connected. We place a large emphasis on global communities and, re and sort of immersion in different cultures. We have programs that offer uh, trips during the semester and a lot of connections with other schools internationally in all, con in all continents, excepting Antarctica. But we also offer four week January term programs that many of which are taught by St. Olaf professors. One of these uh, study abroad options is also a global semester that uh, travels around the globe with the same cohort of students and the same cohort of professors uh, and currently at the, the current global semester program uh, has different months in Tanzania, Argentina, and China as well. St. Olaf is uh, particularly residential. Um, we have 11 uh, residence halls on campus and students live on campus. 95% of students will live on campus all four years. Um, we have a limited amount of off-campus housing, one of which is our honor house program where students can apply for a house each of which will have a theme. One example of a theme is a language house where students uh, agree to only speak that language when they're in the house. So sort of a French house or a Russian house, Spanish house, those are three examples. Um, but we have a number of different houses. Our, our Muslim student organization has a Muslim house. Um, our Black student organization has a um, African-American uh, engagement house. And each of these honor houses, in addition to having themes, they also fund a variety of programs for all St. Olaf students throughout the year. So last fall, for example, when I was a senior, I went to a pumpkin carving and apple cider drinking event that was able to comply with campus restrictions to socially distance on our great lawn behind this college. Um, and it was a really great event uh, to go to, especially in the fall in Minnesota, which is very nice, as I'm sure you all know. 
what else can I say? 33% um, of students participate in some form of music. I'm adept at talking about this because I'm a music major, um, but we also are very deep in other areas of the fine arts too. Um, we have a great art, uh, art program, we have a visual art program, a, a fantastic dance studios and spaces for that, uh, as well as musical theater, which works very well with the music department as well. A similar level of engagement can be also said for athletics. And St. Olaf is special because, you know, as a liberal arts school and as a school where our, our varsity athletics are division three, the students are coming there not for the scholarships, but because they really love what they do in athletics. I am a former division three athlete myself in that I ran cross country and track here all four years while being able to work with choir rehearsals and orchestra rehearsals during that time. Um, so it shows the level of communication that St. Olaf students are able to uh, muster between their different activities in order to keep uh, active and stay engaged, which during COVID and an era of disconnect, um, it was quite uh, very much of a, a boost, a confidence boost, a mood boost, and a really connection boost around campus to have that still be a part of college life last year. Um, St. Olaf has some great outcomes. Uh, we have a 82% four-year graduation rate versus our national average is about 52%. 97% of OLEs in the past three years are employed or involved in a graduate school nine months post-graduation. Um, and because we're a liberal arts undergraduate institution, no grad students, um, there is no competition with grad students for internships, research, field experience, opportunities. Uh, and then one final thing I'll say before I get to uh, sort of the application details is that our campus career center is very um, well endowed. We have a large career center with a large network of alumni um, that is available for appointments, can do anything from editing a resume or a cover letter to just chatting and counseling you through what um, decisions you might want to make during your college experience and what you might wanna do afterwards. In terms of our application dates, we offer early decision and early action. Um, those are both due November 1st. Um, our regular decision and early decision two portals are, um, those applications are due January 15th. We are test optional like many other schools on this list are. Um, so it is of, it will never hurt you to include your, your uh, test scores, but sitting for three hours on a Saturday morning is not an accurate measure of your academic aptitude. So we understand that. Um, any questions, you can uh, direct message me. I'm sorry I was unable to put the slides up, but uh, we have plenty of pictures and images on, the, on that website that Daisha was so gracious enough to provide in the chat. So thank you for working with me. And yeah, thank you so much. Awesome. Thank you, so St. Olaf College. Um, I would now like to invite all of our panelists to join me on video um, as we um, have time for a quick Q&A. Right. Thank you, everyone. Um, if you can all respond to this question, if you'd like to respond in the order you presented, that is fine. What advice would you give to someone going through the college search process? Ooh, uh, that is a fantastic question. Um, being a former student and being a former ambassador who gave campus tours, I think being on campus is definitely going to give you the best idea of that is going to be the best fit for you. So taking a campus tour and then the second piece of advice would be to reach out to your admissions counselors, everybody who's on this screen, any institution you are looking at, contact your admissions counselors. They are full of information, knowledge, wisdom, anything you want to put in there. We are very knowledgeable. So please do not hesitate to reach out. We are not scary individuals. Yeah, I'd probably just add on to that a little bit of the campus visit is you know, don't just uh, come to our campus, but uh, request appointments with academic faculty and staff, uh, request to speak with students in your program that you're considering, attend a theater performance, uh, attend a multicultural event, uh, just something where you get a chance to kind of see a day in the life of a student on that campus. I think uh, putting yourself in that environment can give you a good indication how you would feel as a future student on that campus. I would say looking back at when I was looking at colleges, I definitely didn't ask enough questions. Um, you don't know what you don't ask. So don't be afraid to just ask questions and ask us to connect you with someone. So if it's connecting with a faculty member or um, like Ryan, 
had mentioned connecting with an academic advisor or someone throughout campus or the community or a current student, um, we'd love to do that. Um, so yeah, just asking as many questions as you can and getting the most information to make the right decision and if it's the best fit for you. I'm going to echo some of my colleagues. It's all location, location, location. Um, every school is gonna be able to offer you some incredible internship opportunities, some amazing faculty, um, some great student groups, but you also have to look at what is around you and where that school is. Um, and if you feel at home when you are on that campus. And so to the best that you're available, um, that's the great thing about this past year is we do have so many virtual options. So do what you can to expose yourself to the atmosphere of that college that's going to help inform your decision so much. Um, yeah, I, I can say that uh, oh, visiting, um, if, if the college has an overnight host program and is able to allow current students, uh, typically first years, to host uh, prospective students overnight, that's typically a really great way to sort of envision more of the life of a college student, other than there are a lot of facts and figures flying at you at info sessions and college tours. Um, but yeah, a lot of building on what other people have said here, uh, it's great to visit the campus um, and really to participate in a lot, as many of the programs and activities that are going on. But I'd, I'd advise, yeah, if, you, if there's a way to shadow a student, um, that's a really great way to sort of get a little bit of a window into the life of a college student. Awesome, great advice, everyone. Um, we are now out of time though. So I would like to thank you all for joining us and I'm gonna share my screen for just a few uh, closing notes. So thank you all, thank you to our panelists and thank you to our attendees for joining us. When you close the window, there will be a link to a very quick five question survey that we'd like for you to fill out. We appreciate any feedback you can provide on tonight's session. We encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for more sessions today as well as tomorrow. You'll be able to find the recording for this session as well as the other session recordings at strivescan.com slash Minnesota. Thank you all. We hope you have a wonderful evening.